Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be lead with humor, charm, and decisiveness. Well, I've got two emails from two viewers, and both of them are incurring quite a few good successes. And the second one, he asked me to critique how he did when he met this girl at a bar and ended up taking her home to his place later. So he wanted, he does a really great job of detailing his email on what he said and when he applied certain things and how she reacted. And he did a pretty damn impressive job. But before we get into these emails, I got a quote that I wrote that I want to share with you. And it says, a successful seduction is the result of two people who are mutually sexually attracted to one another having an effortless, romantic, playful, safe, and fun experience together that leads to lovemaking. A man who understands a woman's needs, desires, and wants must create a fun and safe environment where she will feel safer and safer to share and reveal more of herself to him, which ultimately leads to lovemaking. Women want to be in a love story that happens unexpectedly. Women dream of a man who will show up and know exactly what to do to make them feel safe, comfortable, and totally sweep them off their feet romantically. A man whose charm they can't and don't want to resist. The average guy who fails with women talks too much and creates too many awkward moments for romance to bloom effortlessly. In essence, he can't get out of his own way. So let's go through the first guy's email. Now this particular guy, I did a phone session with him. And sometimes people when they're booking phone sessions with me is they don't double check the emails that I actually send to them and they don't really read what they're sending to me. And this particular guy didn't realize it because he probably didn't proofread his email. He sent me the wrong phone number. So when his phone session began, I called the number, I texted the number, left a message for him, I sent him an email saying, hey, I called you for your phone session. And then about 15, 20 minutes later, he sent, he finally checks his email and realizes this, then sends me his corrected phone number. And then after we get to the end of his call, he's like, well, hey, what about those 15 minutes? I was like, hey, man, it's not, it's not my fault that you gave me the wrong phone number. I did my part. I showed up on time. You know, it's like telling the teacher, hey, you know, the dog ate my homework, but I fucking did the homework. I mean, I can't tell the next guy that I've got after him. Hey, this other guy, you know, he gave me the wrong phone number and so we're just gonna cut into your time and take 15 minutes of your time because he's a slacker. Obviously that wouldn't go over too well. And so I encouraged him to go ahead and purchase email coaching if he still had some further questions. Because like you buy an hour of my time, it's like you're, res you're paying, it's just like you go to a basketball game or a football game. You're paying to reserve a seat and that block of time in the future. Now, if you miss the game or you forget about the game or you don't go or you don't show up, obviously you're not going to get refunded your money for that seat because they can't sell it to somebody else after the game has already happened. And likewise, I only have a certain number of hours each week that I have available to sell and I sell out every week. So he says, but he got enough out of the phone session and everything else on my website to have some awesome successes. So let's go through it with him. He says, hey, Corey, you may remember me. We had a phone session almost two months ago, and I was disappointed I get to, didn't get to speak with you for the full hour we had scheduled due to me giving you the wrong phone number. Anyways, I sent you an email leaving on bad terms, and now I'm writing you to let you know that all of your material has worked very well for me. Yeah, he sent me an email kind of pissed off that I wouldn't do a bunch of email coaching for free to make it right for him, even though he's the one that fucked up. It's like you got to take, as a man, you got to take responsibility. When you fuck up, Say, hey, I fucked up. I'm sorry. And now if I'd have shown up 15 minutes, obviously I would have made up, been happy to make up the time to him. But when he does that because he doesn't proofread his own emails, how is that my fault? Lack of poor planning on your part does not constitute a crisis on mine. It's a good way to live. He says, the only girl I've ever considered a relationship with in my life, I'm 23, is basically giving me the ultimatum you speak about in your book about putting the old black book away, LOL. So it sounds like she wants you all to herself. You taught me to focus on my goals and dreams and acting more like a man and leaving all the relationship stuff to women and what feminine energy is all about. 
Exactly, because the core issue of what masculine energy is, it's about breaking through barriers, it's about purpose, it's about mission, it's about drive, it's about succeeding, it's about accomplishing. You've probably heard women say numerous times throughout your life that they like a guy with ambition and they like a guy with goals. Well, the reason being is that's what masculine energy is because if a guy has goals, if he has ambitions, if he has dreams, if he's got things that he's striving for, if he's trying to better himself as a man, as a human being to improve his situation in life, that's the embodiment of masculine energy versus a guy who's just complaining about his job or his career or his business partners that are a pain in the ass or whatever but never doing anything about it and therefore they just kind of stay stuck in the same particular rut and don't really get anywhere. He's not really – that particular guy is not really embodying what it means to be an alpha, alpha male, a masculine male. He's tending to be indecisive, unsure of himself, which those tend to be more feminine qualities. If you notice, if you've ever been in a relationship with women, women tend to take little things and blow them up out of proportion and go, oh my God, what do they do about this? Because obviously they tend to be more emotional, so they have a reaction. And so us as their rock and their mountain are there to take those big problems and shrink them down to their little, little parts and smooth it over. And handle it. And think about it. It's just like a little girl when she has a problem. What does she do? She runs to her dad and she sits in his lap and she says, Daddy, now listen to me. I had this situation happen. And then she proceeds to tell. Like I've, I had, I've had several women I've dated and they had very young kids. Several of them had young daughters. And when you get to spend time around them and see how they are and watch them interact with you, it really – you start to see, because obviously like what I do, I've always been interested in self-help and observing human behavior. And when you learn a certain few principles, you notice it and you see, because I did an article a while back called Why Women Prefer to Chase Men. And it was just in that, one of my girlfriends at the time I was dating, when I was really heavily studying this stuff and trying to understand it, was com kept coming and sitting in my lap for a little while. I'd have my legs crossed, like one leg over the other, drinking a beer in her, um, her, parent, her grandparents' garage we're just hanging out with her brothers and you know doing a family day type of thing and every once in a while she'd come over and she'd uncross my leg and then hop up in my lap and start talking to me asking me questions and then when she got her explanation that was of satisfaction to her she hopped up off my lap went around and ran outside a little while later came back in same thing sat back down on my lap and that's the beauty it's like when a woman grows up and she becomes an adult she likes to talk to her man and share what's going on in her life, what's going on with her girlfriends, and work through her problems by just talking about them. And a lot of guys tend to make the mistake of trying to solve that problem instead of getting her to say, what else, honey, tell me more. Don't leave anything out. So he says, at times I would find it to be really good with girls, and at other times I was just complete shit. It's all about practice, about time and repetition. That's the beauty of life is that you – when you think about it, you really do have a lot of years to figure this shit out. I mean when I think about from the time I was 18 till I'm now or I'm 43, about to be 44 in a few months, I've had a lot of experiences. I've had a lot of relationships. I've been married. I've had a lot of relationships that lasted for several years. I've dated a lot of women. I had a lot of one-night stands when I was younger. And it's like when you go through that process – and you're able to attract the kind of women that you want, you realize what's most important to you. And it's like you overcome those fears and those insecurities and those doubts because every, every parent is going, can't help it but pass on their fears, their insecurities, their doubts, their weird idiosyncrasies on to their children. And so it's like in a way you're, always, you're trying to overcome what your parents were unable to overcome in their own lives. But I believe we all choose our parents because of the opportunity for growth because it's like every time you have a challenge or something's really difficult that you go through in life, it tends to humble you. It tends to cause you to appreciate the little things that you may have kind of gotten off track with and not really appreciate those things as much. And it's like I, I was watching a, a clip the other day. Uh, it, was a, it was a clip from a, something that Tony Robbins had done recently. And he said, what if life is not happening to you, but is happening for you? 
Think about it. I mean, it's divinely orchestrated, like I talk about quite often in my videos. That every person that comes into your life, good or bad, is there to teach you something about yourself and to help prepare you for the person that you must become in order six months, a year, two years, five years, ten down, ten years down the road to be ready for the set of circumstances and people that are going to come into your life at that particular time. And that's why it's so important and why I place such a huge emphasis on not becoming attached to anyone or anything in this world because at the end of the day, everything you build and everyone you love is eventually going to dissolve. And we suffer when we want reality to be other than it is. In other words, when we hold on to someone or something that's either no longer in our lives or, or who doesn't reciprocate interest or who no longer wants to be in our lives, our identity becomes associated with that. And so therefore, when that person's not in your life, you feel like you don't know who you are anymore because they're no longer there in your life. And so the key is that if something doesn't work out, just say, hey, that's the way it's meant to be. Because when you meet somebody, the first time you have a relationship with somebody that knocks your fucking socks off and who feels the same way about you and you fall in love and you spend many years together, waking up together, making love together several times a day, shopping together, going to the bathroom together, taking showers together, traveling together, going through, you know, taking her through medical procedures or to the doctor or things like that. I mean, you really get to deeply know another human being and it really is all about giving and loving and the right people will show up in your life and will want to stick around. I mean, think about it. I say this a lot too. How often do you meet a new best friend? It doesn't happen every day. So if you can learn to think the way I think and the way I look at the world is that even if something doesn't work out, I know the temptation is to get mad or pissed off or angry with yourself, but what you got to understand, the reason that person really didn't stick around is because they're not supposed to stick around. And your ability to move forward and grow into the fullness of the person you need to become is directly proportional to your ability to let things and people go who simply don't mutually want you as well. He says, you not only helped me to realize why, but you've helped me to get an awesome girl crawling back to me. And the kick is using next to no effort. It's amazing what it is when a man focuses on his purpose and his mission in life and just focuses on being really awesome at being who he is. You're going to be a social person. You're going to be seen as an alpha. People are going to be coming up to you wanting to talk to you. People will hear about you. Women will hear about you. And they'll want to find a way where they can meet you and put themselves into your orbit and get your attention with their beautiful looks and their body and the type things that they, they put in their bodies that make them look so delicious and really show off their curves. But it's up to you to be the leader and to be decisive when one of these beautiful flowers walks into your world to take an opportunity to do something about it. But it's like understanding what's masculine and what's feminine and being able to operate and like this, just like this guy said, little to no effort. That's the way it's supposed to be. Why is that? Because bonding and connection and love, that's all feminine energy. And when the guy's doing all of that, he's in essence acting like the woman. That's why the woman just kind of sits there and does nothing. She's not really engaged. She doesn't really have a chance to engage her emotions and she gets turned off, which is where this guy was when I first started working with him. But when he backed off and became centered in his purpose, basically the same guy that he was before he met her and became so uncentered, that's why it's important to have a strong sense of who you are as a man, to know what you want and to be moving in that direction and understanding that the right people are going to want to join you for your journey. The right women, they'll want to be your cheerleader. But the wrong ones, well, they'll find flaw fault with you. They won't like certain things you say. You'll turn them off. You'll piss them off, whatever it happens to be. And they'll move on down the road. The key is let them. Because by letting them go, you hold the space open for the right person to show up and it'll fit like a glove. It's like no, really kind of almost like no matter what you do, it's like they won't, they won't leave you. Because they just did you. Because you just do it for them. But you, you got to learn to love and accept yourself to the point where if you really love and accept yourself, then when you, you'll recognize that in another person, when another person values you and appreciates you and is enthusiastically asking you questions about your life and they want to know more about you. 
That's a huge difference. When you're talking to a girl that's not really that into you, she doesn't give a fuck about your life. She doesn't care about what you do for a living. She's not really interested in your hobbies. But somebody who's really interested in you, they're going to be asking poignant questions about what you're into and why you're into it and what you like about it. And their eyes are going to be really big and they're going to be hanging on your every word. Why? Because you just do it for them. Attraction is not a choice. He, said, he says, you're a genius, man. Thank you for all your help and your generosity and continually devoting your time and giving guys like me endless free material to watch. I'm really into the success videos you've been putting out lately as well. One day when I make it pro, I'm sure I'll hit you up. All the best. So cool. Thanks for the email and thanks for the fact that you're actually applying this stuff. That's why I say it all the time. It's like I put all these videos out there and the articles out there. I don't even let people read my ebook for free on my website if they're, they don't, can't come up with a 10 bucks or they're just skeptical, whatever, you can read for free on my fucking website by subscribing to the email newsletter and, and going to the members area and just follow the instructions because I want to help people. And there's a lot more people that I'm going to help and I'm never going to hear from. I'm never going to know how my work impacts their lives, but that's okay because maybe they tell one of their friends about me and that friend comes and has me do a phone session with him, he buys my book, or he makes a donation, or, or sends me an email expressing his gratitude. The way I look at it is every person that you help is impacting the world that you and I grow up into. So if you can make somebody else's life better, you make the world a better place. So let's move on to the second email. This guy says, hey coach, I've really focused my life towards improving my social skills. I started with the basic eye contact drills that you discuss in your book. I then moved on to starting up conversations with random people. I did on my YouTube channel there is a uh, there's a series of videos called Essential Fundamentals and that's where the video is improving your social skills. So if you watch all of those videos and you follow the things that I teach in there, that's what this guy did. Repetitions and other skills. So I give like little assignments. What depending because every guy's different. Some guys have no problem approaching women. Other guys are great with approaching women, but they're terrible on the phone. Or other guys are great on approaching women, they're great on the phone, but things kind of get messed up when they're on a date. Or they just have a problem maintaining long-term relationships. I mean, every guy knows a lot about what he really needs to know, but I hope you fill in that knowledge gap so you can get the most with the least amount of effort. It's all about the path of least resistance. I like things to be easy. He says, I then moved on to starting up conversations with random people, an issue with people I found less intimidating and gradually towards people I found intimidating. Yeah, your comfort zone is going to be where you're most uncomfortable. And so you do it with the easy people, the people that don't intimidate you at first, it's not like a big deal. And then you realize that's really easy. It's not that big of a deal. Then you start moving on to more and more challenging people people that you really want to talk to or that make you nervous. And once you overcome that, you just keep following the steps like I talk about in the book and in the videos. He says, initially with people I found less intimidating and gradually gradually toward people I found intimidating, and it's certainly a rush just talking to intimidating women. I originally thought I could completely eliminate any nervousness before approaching beautiful girls. There'll always be a little bit of butterflies in your stomach. You'll be always be like right before you do it or you're in the process and your mind will be going, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Holy shit. What if it doesn't go well? He says, but I've realized there's always going to be some butterflies and conquering those butterflies by going for what you want in life is the essence of manhood. Exactly. You got to fucking show up and that's what you're doing. You're showing up and that's what women deserve. Whether they like you or not, what you owe them is you at least have to show up is a fucking man and go for what you want and put your balls in the chopping block and even if they chop them off, who cares? No big deal, you move on to the next. Obviously that's metaphorically speaking of of castrating you. He says, I even picked up a girl at a bar during a night out. He says, I had approached a few women that night and I received a few numbers but their attraction levels weren't that high so I moved on. This is why I say repetition is a mother of skill. What's so key about what this guy just said is that he approached several dozen women, got several phone numbers, but he could tell they weren't really crazy into him. That's why you keep circulating. Remember, circulating is the key to the universe. So you keep moving around because 
You want somebody that's excited for you. Why? Because you're awesome. Don't you see yourself as being awesome? And if you don't, you should see yourself as being that way. And you need to do what it takes to get your life to a place where you can perceive yourself as being awesome and have an awesome life just being single. He says, I saw a pretty cute girl sitting with her friends, so I approached. I walked right up to her with a smirk on my face. I looked right in her eyes and I said hello. We began to banter when I simply said, peanuts are gross. He says, she was eating peanuts. We teased each other for a while, then I eventually said, I have a confession. The only reason I came over here is because you're cute as hell. I like that. You're being honest. You're being authentic. You're telling her exactly what you think about her. But there's nothing wrong with walking over to a group of girls and if you're not, you don't feel bold enough to just say, hey, I had to come over because you're cute as hell, you got to kind of warm up to it. That's okay because maybe when you walk up to a group of girls, you might think she's cute as hell and obviously that's what's propelling you to go over there and talk to her. But you really want to see what she's like. Is she as cool in, in person? Is she a good conversationalist? Is she interesting? Is she really excited that you are there? Because a girl who likes you, guess what? She'll be excited. She'll be happy that she's talking to you. That's a huge difference. And guys that don't have a lot of experience talking to women or they say, oh, I, I got to watch pickup videos. I, I got I to gotta read a thousand books. It's like if you just get out there and start talking to people without even asking them out. Just saying hello, hey, how are you, what's up? How's your day going? How are you? And just see, do that with 100 women. Just say that to 100 different women. You'll notice out of those 100 women, there's gonna be a few of them that seem to be extra enthusiastic. Meaning they were more enthusiastic than all the other 97 or 90 women that you talk to. And that's what you're looking for. You're starting to see patterns. And so the more you interact, the more you see and you realize the truth, which is, Attraction ain't a choice. She either likes you or she doesn't. She doesn't have any choice in the matter. And that's really what you're doing when you interact with a woman is you're trying to, to see does she is she really that into me in order to warrant my sticking around and seeing if there's really some chemistry here. Because if there's not, you want to keep moving. When you first start doing it, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to approach way more women than you're going to be successful with. That's okay. Because once you start to see and notice the difference your success rate will actually start going up because the type of women that you actually approach will be different because you'll be noticing it in their eye contact with their body language, what the differences are between the ones that aren't really that interested and the ones that are just kind of, that are really digging you. He says, the reason I came over here is because you're cute as hell and I saw those big Bambi eyes and I just smiled. For the rest of the interaction, I focused on staying away from logical conversation and focused on treating her like a bratty little sister. It's much easier to be flirtatious when conversation is fun and emotional. Yeah, it's a lot of goofing around, a, a lot of silly things. I was, I was talking about a video I did the other day. I was talking to an old girlfriend of mine. And even though we hadn't talked in years, we went right back in that silly, goofy, weird language that we created together years and years ago when we were together. And it was really cool. I mean, because I was using terms and things that that were are our own kind of little secret language, and it's fun. That's like all we were talking. There was a little bit of normal conversation, but it was all like in kind of baby talk and the goofy kind of weird talk that we tend to do and teasing each other in a fun way. And it just made it fun. It made it exciting. Well, it's playful and fun after all. And that's what you want to do. You want to get in that kind of a place. He says, she began to poke my belly, so I poked her back, and she put her arm around my back, so I pinched the inside of her thigh. And he says, risky. She said while smiling, hey, don't touch me there. So I said, what do you mean? You know you like it. Great fucking comeback. And see, this is what happens with practice and repetition. As you get bolder and bolder, and obviously when a girl really likes you and you do that, and she says, hey, I didn't really like it, but she's seeing a, she's got a smile on her face and not a scowl. She's, kind of, she's very playful. He says, I pulled away a bit trying to tease her. He says, keep in mind, I just met this girl 15 minutes before all this. Just like Adam Carolla said, when a woman likes you, the doors start opening and literally all you have to do is to walk through them. But if they start shutting in your face, you turn around and you walk away. He says, about a half hour into the interaction, when our faces were close, I went for a kiss. She pulled away and she said, we can't do that. I said, while well, smirking, what do you mean? I then took charge and told her to come outside with me. 
Nice job, dude. You let her. That's the process of seduction is, is to eventually isolate her because she's here with a girlfriend of hers. She had to ask her very protective friend for permission. We went outside and we absolute, went absolutely nuts on each other. I couldn't believe it. Because partly in her mind is like, oh my God, I really want to kiss you, but my girlfriend's here. What's she going to think? And that's why it's important in the process of seduction is to get her and you alone where she's not worried about one of her girlfriends go, oh, you're such a fucking slut because they're worried about being labeled that. So if you can take her outside where it's just you and her, she can do what she really wants to do, which is kiss you back. And obviously in this particular case, that's what happened. Because the longer, that's why I say going out on group dates with somebody that you're dating is a bad way to go until your boyfriend, girlfriend, because they end up cock blocking you and they end up getting in the way or you get one of your drunk friends who doesn't know anything about women coming over and thinking he's being helpful but almost in essence trying to plead your case why wow you should really give him a chance and he never really has had a nice girl or girl is as pretty as you are and you hear about all the shit that one of your friends said it's like oh man that's why it's better to have just you and her when you go out on dates because the more you do group dates the more people that are around the higher the likelihood is that you're going to get cock blocked or clam slammed he says, I eventually took her home. We didn't have sex, but she let me suck on her boobs. And she said, we can have sex. I never do this sort of thing. And you probably fuck little bitches all the time. He says, I thought this was funny as this was the first time I had ever brought a girl home from a bar after years of trying. I feel, finally feel like a confident man. Remember, women want to feel more special than all the other girls. And obviously, if, you're, if she's there at your place... And she says something like that, she's presupposing that you probably hook up a lot. And that's when you say something to the effect of, hey, I don't sleep around. I don't, I'm not going to hook up with just anybody. I think you're absolutely amazing. And it was obvious from the moment we met that you and I have some real great chemistry that just doesn't come along every day. Wouldn't you agree? And she's going to say, yeah, of course. That's why you start kissing and making out right after that. Because the goal is you want to make her feel more special than all of those little bitches that you're bringing home to fuck in, in her eyes. Because she wants to feel special. If she's there, it's because she's different and she's better than all the rest of those girls. Two steps forward, one step back. And this, when a girl comes back to your house, she's ready to hook up. But that's okay because this is the first time in your life you ever met a random girl out and you took her home. And that's fucking awesome. Good job. He says, this sort of thing was always a dream to me and I was just too scared to try it. It's amazing what happens when you're bold. And that's the key is attraction is not a choice. And therefore, when you're in this particular situation, you go for it. What's the downside? You've never gotten a girl home back to your house anyways on a one night stand, right? So what's the difference if it doesn't work out? You're trying something new. And you see what happened is he followed the instructions and guess what happened? He got this girl to come back to his place even though he wasn't able to seal the deal completely, it's still definitely a fucking win. It's a victory. He said, by putting myself out there, I was able to set myself apart from the rest of the scared dudes. It's liberating. What do you think of my interaction? It's fucking awesome. Good fucking job. Pat yourself in the back. You obviously had a great time and it wasn't that hard, was it? He says, is there anything you would suggest? Well, like I talked about when you had her back at your place, just going, saying the kinds of things I said to her, but remember, it's two steps forward one step back is what you were getting was the last little bit of resistance because she doesn't want any responsibility for the sex act. She doesn't want to deal with her girlfriends the next day going, oh, you fucking slut. You went home with that guy. If she can say, oh, God, he just swept me off my feet. It's just like I couldn't say no to him. It was so amazing. It just, we clicked so well. And her girlfriends are going, to go, yeah, it was pretty obvious. You guys were like, there was nobody else around. It's like time stood still because that's what happens when chemistry happens between two people is that everybody that's observing that and watch it and it's a beautiful thing and you can create that but you got to practice for it so great job thanks for the email so if you'd like to get my help personally the quickest way is to do Skype phone or email coaching you can choose any one of those options by going to my website click the products tab on any page of my website and just follow the instructions and I will talk to you soon